Good morning. I want to call to order this meeting of the Monroe County Board of Commissioners. It is February 22nd, and I'll note for the record that all three commissioners are present. Um, I'd like to turn this over to Commissioner T Jones. We, the Monroe County Board of Commissioners, renew our commitment to welcome and protect the rights of all people, regardless of age, race, color, creed, disability, sexual orientation, gender, gender identity, marital status, economic status, and national origin. And we affirm the right of every person to live peacefully and without fear, and we will fight and resist at every step discrimination and harmful policies, whatever their source. We also stand in support of our county public school systems, both RBB and MCCSC. Thank you. Move on to department updates. We'll start with Lori Kelly from Health. Uh, good morning. Just a few updates. The Monroe County COVID-19 community level remains low at this time. Hospital admissions are down and deaths remain at zero. Flu levels across the state are still at minimal levels. And the public health clinic has vaccines available for all ages. You may call 812-353-3244 to make an appointment. Questions or comments, Commissioner Jones? Commissioner Thomas? Um, I'm just wondering if you have any updated information on the COVID levels in the wastewater testing? Um, the information that I currently have is still the information that was available for the week of February 8th. Uh, so biobot data that I was able to find this morning is still uh, noting February 8th, um, but detections were noted to be at 90% for the variant of XBB. Um, that's the most updated information I found at this time. Great, thank you. Thanks. Thank you, and I'll note for the public that the Public Health Clinic is at 333 East Miller Drive, um, and they're very efficient when you go in. So, appreciate that. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. I believe planning is here. Good morning. Um, I would like to share screen briefly for a moment to make an announcement on a meeting. All right, so hopefully you can see this. Um, planning department has been working on our county development ordinance, and we are gonna host a focus group March 23rd from 5.30 to 6.45 p.m. Um, this will be virtually only focus groups, and um, the public will have an option of choosing from one of the following topics, and they'll all be run concurrently together. So construction review, economic development, or environmental provisions. Um, each group will be hosted uh, via Zoom, and we will have staff members there, possibly um, commissioners, plan commissioners, uh, and hopefully councilmen may show up. Um, so again, this will be March 23rd from 5.30 to 6.45. We will be putting more information on our website, the www.monroecdo.com, and um, we will be recording those and taking any of those comments that we accumulate during the, those meetings uh, to uh, incorporate into the CDO. So, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate having this uh, in, as a slide also. Um, is Ms. McAfee here from the JDAI initiative? Good morning, yes. Hi, and I believe there's a slide that um, <coughs> TSD has to put up, I hope. Think so too. There we go. Yes, actually, this is I sent the wrong one yesterday. So I think Angie pretty sent an updated slide. If not, I have it I available. And could yeah, I did send the, the updated one to the Zoom meetings group. Hi, Angie. Hey, how are you? I'm good, thank you. <laughs> good to see you. <laughs> Do I have the ability to share my screen? Or if TSD can't, the updated one? Because it actually came in two formats, um, a PDF and a PowerPoint, I think, is how yep. it was sent. Can you, 
Can you allow um, Ms. McAfee to share her screen? Well, while we're working on the technology stuff, um, oh, there we go. Here we go. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So hopefully you're seeing the trust-based relational intervention slide. Yes. Yes. All right. Perfect. Thank you. It, it's been a Monday morning for me all day long, so my apologies. So anyway, I'm really excited to share with the community one of the initiatives that we work with here in probation is JDAI, which is Juvenile Detention Alternatives Initiative. Um, and we are always looking at opportunities to empower our community and our partner agencies, parents, young people, stakeholders, ways to help address unmet needs for young people and families. Um, our ultimate goal is to divert as many families as we can from our system. We know that once people get involved in either the youth justice system or the adult system, um, sometimes it's really hard to get out. So what I'm here to share with you today is we have some grant funding to pay for scholarships for up to five families and a family is one or two caregivers in the same household. So it doesn't have to be, you know, a mom or a dad. It could be grandparents. It could be foster parents. It could be aunts, uncles, who's ever responsible for caring for those young people. And they will have an opportunity to participate in our two day virtual workshop. March 10th and 11th, it's 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And then there are three support calls after that. You can see the dates on the screen. I don't have specific times, um, but those support calls are intended to help implementation of what you learn. Many of us go to training, we come back all inspired. We think this is gonna be great. And then, you know, the next morning we wake up and sometimes it's hard to put into practice the great stuff we learned. TBRI, as you see on the screen again, is an attachment-based trauma-informed approach, and it's really intended to be used with people, young people, adults that have experienced trauma. Um, and we've talked about this before, and the reality is most of us have experienced some level of trauma. So this is open to our community. If you have an interest in learning more about it, please contact me. My contact information is on the screen, either by telephone or email. Um, also, Hope Alight is the agency that's providing this training, and if there's anybody on this call that just in general wants to learn more about what is trust-based relational intervention, what is it that we've done to bring it to our probation department, how might another agency be interested in exploring how well this might work in your agency, I would be more than happy to point you in the right directions. Excellent. Thank you. Commissioner Jones, anything? Yeah, this is, oops, sorry. This is really exciting. Um, I think anytime we can work with families, it's just so important. That's often just getting, really getting to the root of problems. And so I'm, I'm really excited to see this. Yeah, this is really excellent, and thank you for offering this, and for, I, I think the follow-up idea is a great one. Really, the real world is never quite what you think it's going to be in the classroom, so thank you for this. Well, and I think it strengthens families, and it's preventative instead of reactive, and so I really appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you for being with us today and going to that effort. Yes, thank you all for the time. Have a great day. You too. Hope, hope it turns into Wednesday for you soon. <laughs> yes, me too. Thank you. Friday would be better. <laughs> Friday would be better, yes. <laughs> okay, well, it's now time for public comment. Uh, please limit yourself to three minutes, and this is for items not on the agenda. Uh, if you have a comment to make, please come forward and state your name, as well as whether or not you're a Monroe County resident. Is, is your mic on? I'm sorry. There you Check go. One. Oh, you got it. All right. Thank you. <laughs> I'll start over. Thanks. Um, good morning. My name is Seth Mutchler. I am a resident of Monroe County. And I want to try to sort of uh, split my time because I have two things I really want to address this morning. 
Um, the first one is that I read the email that was sent uh, from Sheriff Marte to you, Commissioner Githens, and I presume that the other commissioners have also read it. Um, what I don't know is if the community has an opportunity to read that, and so to, to briefly summarize a very long email, uh, uh, Sheriff Marte outlined in, in great length and in great detail exactly how, in my opinion, negligent you have been in helping get our county jail to an acceptable level. Um, it's a complicated issue for me because I, uh, speaking only for myself, I, I, I don't necessarily want, I don't want a new jail. I don't, I don't want jails at all in a perfect world, in a utopian world, but I also recognize that our current jail is in a really messed up state and it's so just frustrating to me to read this email um, and to see the ways that you have been fighting this uh, reform and this change. Um, and so I know that the, to anybody in the audience or anybody watching on Zoom, I know that the B-Square Bulletin has published this email in full. Um, I have paper copies here with me today, so if anybody wants any, um, because I think it is the responsibility of every public member to read this and really see what's going on in our, in our county government. Um, so that was sort of item one. Uh, item two is I just wanna, I don't know, I don't really know how to say this. I've been thinking about this for the last couple of days. Like, are y'all okay? Like, what's going on? Like, I have been attending CGRC meetings for the last couple of months since I got involved in this issue. I've been watching, I've been reading. It just, I, I don't understand. And like, like, I'm a person, I have motivations, I intrinsically want what's best for my community, and I just have to trust that you are people and that you intrinsically want what's best for our community. But I just don't see your actions meeting that. And so I'm, I'm just honestly, I, I, don't, I don't get it. And like, I know that many of you ran on very progressive policies when you were running for office, and it's just, it's confusing to me. And I don't know if it's just like, to just like put it frankly, I'm just gonna like speak with like honesty here. Like, I don't know if it's pride. I don't know if you just don't wanna accept that you maybe like said some things and did some things before that now have been like, proven that maybe we should be going a different direction and you don't want to admit that, it's not even that you were wrong, just admit that like things have changed. Like I just don't understand, and I just don't understand how like, I don't understand how we got to this point. And like, I know it's easy to say, it's harder to do, but like, I don't know, I would like to think that if I was in your shoes, I would just say, let's take a hard reset and let's just like step back, get the politics out, get the personality out, and just like, let's just refocus on the people in our community and the people who are incarcerated in our community and refocus on them. And I see that I'm out of time, so thank you. Thank you. And I see we have someone um, virtually who would like to speak. Whoa, hi, can you all hear me? Yes. Hi, my name is Laura Lissert, where I'm a Monroe County resident. Um, thanks for hearing public comment. Um, I too have been following uh, what's been going on in the jail, um, particularly because I've been a volunteer in the jail for the last 13 years. And um, I noticed come mid-January a huge difference in the physical interior of the jail, um, as well as a new orientation of the officers to welcome us volunteers. Um, and we suddenly started to have people in our classes and I could just I was just so grateful that the inmates were being well taken care of and were no longer on 23 hour lockdown. Um, and I thought um, that it was the sheriff solely responsible for making those changes. And I see from that email, um, the work that he has been doing and I'm so grateful for the work he's been doing to make um, being in jail a slightly better experience than the awful experience that it is. Um, and I was confused about who had the power to, um, or who was ultimately responsible for the condition of the jail. And that email that I read really clarified that, um, that it's the commissioner's responsibility to ensure a safe, um, humane condition of the jail. And so I really wanna ask the commissioners who've been um, commissioners for a long time, why was the jail in such disrepair? What were you doing with your power that did not include making sure that people in that space were not suffering and not exposed to inhumane conditions like sleeping on the floor in feces? Um, and I hope that um, you go into the jail. I don't know if you've been there before. Um, 
Uh, I would invite you if you would like to join me. I do a creative writing class on Tuesday mornings with um, men from I Block and A Block, and uh, it's at 10 a.m. And I invite anybody um, there in county government who would like to meet some of the folks and um, see the inside of the jail. Um, you are welcome to join me. Um, my, I can put my email in the chat box. I would really love to have you. Um, and yeah, and I just urge you to um, work collaboratively with the sheriff, uh, which seems like an obvious position to take to ensure the well-being of the folks who are there, um, to get them out of there as soon as possible. And um, yeah, and, and, and do what you are charged with doing as an elected commissioner of this county. So thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Seeing none, let's move on to approval of the minutes. Do I have a motion? Yep. I move approval of the minutes for February 15, 2023. Second. Thank you. Are there any additions or corrections? No. I sent one in, and so it's already been taken care of, which I appreciate very much. So um, call for a vote. All those in favor of approving the minutes from February 15th. 2023 signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes 3-0. Next item. I move approval of the claims docket accounts payable February 22nd, 2023 and payroll February 24th, 2023. Second. Thank you. And I believe we have Ms. Lettler here. Good morning, commissioners. Accounts payable for February 22nd, 2023 is 600 $55,887.98. And payroll for February 24th, 2023 is $1,896,497.79. Thank you. Any questions or comments? No, I don't. No. Any uh, qu comments from the public? See none, I call for a vote on approval of the claims docket for accounts payable February 22nd, 2023, and payroll February 24th, 2023. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes three to zero. I will um, note for the record that we have reports from the clerk for January of 2023 and weights and measures January 16th through February 15th, 2023. I always enjoy reading the weights and measures mm -hmm. stuff and, and looking at, at how many different kinds of things that uh, he takes care of, so I appreciate those. So moving on to new business, first item. I move approval of an agreement with SPS Portal Services, fund name County General, fund number 1,000, an amount not to exceed $11,520 per year. Second. And I believe we have Ms. Martin here with us, please. Good, good morning, ladies. Um, I'm gonna give you a little bit of back history. Uh, right now we use a system called DocuWare. It's a premise-based system. Uh, we have numerous items that we have scanned to a local server. We would like to utilize SBS and move all that data to the cloud. Uh, it will save the county money over time <coughs> its space. Um, we did pull in Greg from IT to make sure that he was on board with it. And I think that he is in your audience right now so he can talk more on it. So if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer it for you. Mr. Crown, do you have things you want to start sharing with us here before we start? Uh, yes, as uh, Ms. Martin had mentioned, uh, this move to the cloud will take approximately a terabyte worth of data off of our server that we have to provide licensing for and, and backup as well. Uh, so we will see a reduction in operating costs there as well as the software package they've offered the clerk is a lesser cost since it's cloud-based and they will be able to provide support management on their own systems rather than having to do it to ours. So uh, there's two sides to this where we say there's a cost savings associated with it. but. Uh, I've spoke with DocuWare, uh, SBS portals, and they are responsible for the backup of all that software. They use a hybrid system on their servers, so that data is taken care of and takes the responsibility off of us. I appreciate the 
expanded explanation. Thank you. Questions or comments, Commissioner Jones? No, I don't, but I think it's a great idea. Commissioner Thomas? No questions, thank you. Good. I think it's always great when we can save taxpayer dollars as well as having things taken care of efficiently this way. So thank you both. Um, is there any public comment on this item? Seeing none, it call for a vote on agreement with SBS Portal Services. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes three to zero. Next item, please. I move approval of the F and E payment pros maintenance agreement, fund name, county general, fund number one thousand, the amount of three thousand eight hundred seventy-five dollars. Second. And we have Ms. McClellan here. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning, commissioners. This is Jessica McClellan, Monroe County Treasurer. This contract is for um, our scanner that we use to process uh, tax payments in our office. It is for the, um, the software license for the program that the scanner talks to on the computer and for uh, maintenance to the actual machine itself. It has lasers and it's, it's, a, it's kind of like a really big version of what a bank teller has when you take your checks into the bank and it processes thousands of payments a day. That assumes we get thousands of payments a day, right? Yes. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Commissioner Jones, any questions? No, I don't. <laughs> Commissioner Thomas. No questions. Good idea. Yeah, well, I assume it, it really reduces the amount of staff that's needed and is much more efficient. Yes, it is care of this. much more efficient. And we get a scanned image of every payment that goes through that machine. We get a scanned image of it that we can keep for as long as we need it. It's great for research, it's great for answering questions, it's great for showing taxpayer a copy of their check that came in. So it's good for verification? Yes, very Excellent. good. Okay, is there any public comment on this item? Seeing none, it call for a vote on the agreement with F&E payment pros maintenance. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes three to zero. Next item, please. I move approval of the L&D Mail Master's Agreement, fund name County General, fund number 1,000, an amount not to exceed $40,000. Second. And again, Ms. McClellan. Uh, this agreement is with L&D Mail Masters to print and mail our 2023 tax bills. The service agreement with L&D Mail Masters covers um, uh, printing the tax bills, getting them ready for mailing, um, putting, stuffing them in all the envelopes, um, combining bills that go to the same address, all that kind of work they do. We also um, pay postage to L&D Mail Masters and they immediately pay that to USPS. Um, it's because L&D has a contract with them to get a bulk rate, and so we pay L&D and then they pay, US, they pay the Postal Service. So that's why there is a service contract for $15,000 that covers the processing of the bills and then postage. Um, it, both of these numbers are estimates based on um, last year's data. And then when we send them live data right before we print, and then a couple weeks later, we'll get the final bill. Thank you. It works out every year to just about what we expected. Questions or comments? This is pretty important for the functioning of the county, so. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they do a really, really good job with us, with, with many, many Indiana counties. They're based in New Albany. So they're an Indiana company as well? Yes, and a woman-owned owned company, actually, too. Mm -hmm. Nice. Commissioner Thomas? No questions. Mm -hmm. Thank okay. you. Any comments from the public? Seeing none, I call for a vote on the agreement with L&D Mailmasters. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes three to zero. Thank you very much. Thank you, commissioners. Next item. I move approval of an amendment to the 2021 Sophia Travis Community Service Grant with Wheeler Ministries. Second. And we have Ms. Molly Turner King here to talk with us about this. Good morning, commissioners. Um, so what's before you is an amendment to the 2021 Sophia Travis Community Service Grant. Um, agreement uh, between the county and Wheeler Mission. Wheeler Mission had received the grant um, in July of 2021 and they were supposed to s spend the funds and by the end of the calendar year of 2022. And they were going to 
um, do intervention services and shelter diversion with the funds. Um, earlier this year, Wheeler reached out to the Sophia Travis Grant Committee and said that they had not been able to spend the funds by the end of 2022 and they were requesting an extension um, on how long they would have to spend those funds. So on February 1st, Sophia Travis Grant Committee met they reviewed Wheeler's request and agreed that they would recommend um, that Wheeler have until the end of 2023 to spend their funds. And then the council approved that request on February 14th. So this is for your consideration to approve the extension of Wheeler's um, grant funds. Thank you. Questions, Commissioner T Jones? No, I don't. Commissioner Thomas. Uh, no questions, and I appreciate everybody's flexibility in difficult times on getting any construction work done. <laughs> yes, COVID has altered things for many people. So is there any uh, comments from the public on this item? I'm also pleased that we can extend this because Wheeler does do a great service for our community. So all those in favor of approving the amendment to 2021 Sophia Travis Community Service Grant for Wheeler Ministries, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes three to zero. Thank you, Ms. Turner King. Thank you. Next item, please. I move an approval of an agreement with the Yasmin Elstone Law Group for the Liberty Drive extension, fund name 2020 GO bond, fund number 4813, the amount as needed. Second. Thank you. And we have Mr. Cockrell here. Yeah, yes, this is kind of an agreement that we typically see at the beginning of any uh, federal aid or any really any project. This is an agreement with a law firm who handles uh, condemnation cases exclusively. At this point, I'm not aware that their services are going to be needed in this, but given the time frames we always have to deal with with these uh, uh, federal, pro federal programs, we like to have them on board in case there is an issue with uh, acquiring the necessary um, easements or right-of-way for that project. This is for, uh, I believe, the, the Karst Trail. It will connect uh, the Karst Trail to Liberty Drive, and I think that that will eventually lead that will connect to the city's trail so that you could go from Cars Farm Park all the way to the B line. I think that is the end result of this project. Thank you. Questions or comments? No, I don't. None. None. I have none either. This seems a very straightforward kind of thing. One it's the kind of thing we've seen multiple times before. Is there any public comment on this item? See none, call for a vote on the Yasmin L. Stump Law Group Agreement. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes three to zero. Next item, please. I move approval of Ordinance 2023-01, the Ratliff Road Rezone. Second. And I believe we have Mr. Brown here today to talk with us about it. Can you please promote Mr. Brown to as panelist. He's still listed as an attendee. There we go. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. All right. Uh, one second, I'd like to share my screen real quick. So this is a rezone from planned unit development to agricultural rural reserve. It's one 18 <laughs> acre or less in the Richland Township, section 16 at uh, 7935 West Ratliff Road. Uh, this was given a positive recommendation by the plan commission on December 13th, 2022 at a, by vote of uh, seven to zero. And the background is that the purpose of this is to bring the lots into a zoning district that will allow it to be combined with a 40 acre lots that the petition also owns to the south for the purposes of creating a four lot sliding scale subdivision. If approved, the petitioner intends to apply for a sliding scale subdivision, all ordinance standards will require, will apply. But if denied, the petitioner will be unable to use this lot for a sliding scale subdivision 
as this subdivision process is only applicable in the agricultural rural reserve, forest reserve, and conservation residential zones. In the past, this site was meant to be rezoned into a planned unit development, but the owner has not submitted a planned development plan to date. Uh, the impetus for creating the PUD was to establish an agricultural event center, or as I've often heard in layman's terms, a party barn, which at the time was not a permitted use in the agricultural rural reserve zone, but is now conditional use. As I said, the petitioner intends to utilize this lot with a 40 acre lot they own directly to the south to, to create a four lot science skills subdivision. And once more, the petition was given a positive recommendation by the plan commission on December 13th, 2022, by vote of seven to zero. And here's just a current zoning map showing the lot in question. The square lot directly to the south is the 40 acre lot that they also own and plan to sort of combine and divide via the subdivision process. And here is what it, and here ha is the comprehensive plan. Both lots are zoned to the same thing in comprehensive plan, rural residential. And here is a site conditions map showing the elevation and contours of the property. Are there any questions from the commission? No, I don't. Commissioner Thomas? No, I don't have any questions. Um, I just, I just, I had flashbacks when we did this because the Magnolia Farms PUD was a very long process. Um, but um, so I, I don't have any uh, difficulty reverting it back to what it was, knowing it's going to go through sliding scale. And could you please explain, Mr. Brown, what a four lot sliding scale subdivision is? <laughs> <laughs> All those S's, yeah. So a subdivision, as you probably know, does not refer to a cul-de-sac neighborhood. It refers to any division of land. And the sliding scale subdivision is a subdivision process that can be accomplished in certain zoning districts to create up to four lots. Well, three new lots plus an existing lot. And then how can those be used? So, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, how can those be used? Uh, well, in the agricultural rural reserve zone, we often see them being used for uh, residence, per residential purposes. The owner potentially wants to divide their land and sell them off to uh, potential homeowners. Thank you. And the key is that um, using the sliding scale is easier um, for residents than going through a regular subdivision process, but the main parcel is called the parent parcel and it's the largest one and that must remain undeveloped for a specified number of years um, yes 25 years after the subdivision is approved it also has to be 55 percent of the original acreage right so you're going to end up with um, a few smaller lots being um, taken off this larger lot rather than taking this large lot and breaking it into four pieces or three or two pieces so you. so you maintain that, the rural character. That's my understanding of their plan, yes. Thank you. I appreciate that explanation. Um, is there anyone here who wishes to speak in favor of this rezone? Is there anyone who wishes to speak against the rezone? Is anybody on Zoom? Is there anyone uh, on Zoom? I see one. Yes, Brandon Powell, uh, please state your name, whether or not you're a resident and whether or not you are in favor or opposed to the rezone. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Brandon Powell. Uh, I'm a Monroe, Monroe County resident. And I'm the current property owner of 7935 West Ratliff Road. My wife and I are applying for this uh, this change. So that's, uh, our primary purpose is to uh, be able to build a new home on the property. In order to sell the existing home, we have to be able to subdivide the property. So we've requested, uh, or we're going, we plan to request four lots because uh, as was mentioned, uh, we will be able to, we will not be able to make any other further uh, dividing of the property for 25 years. So in an attempt to try to set ourselves up uh, for the future, uh, because of that lack of ability to change, we have proposed the, uh, the four parcel subdivide. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Any other comments 
from my colleagues. No. No? Okay. Then I call for a vote on approval of the Ordinance 2023-01, rezone of Ratliff Road. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes three to zero. Thank you. Next item. I move approval of Ordinance 2023-06, the Whitehall Business Park PUD Amendment Number Four. Second. And we have is it Ms. Behrman or Ms. Cresilius with us today. Yes, uh, I'm Tammy Behrman, Assistant Director. I'll be filling in for Ann Cresilius. She's in some training today regarding parcel fabric. It's very technical, so happy to have her doing that today. Um, so I'll be presenting this um, outline plan amendment for representing ordinance uh, 2023-06. It's the Whitehall Business Park PUO Amendment 4. Um, it's one 8.99 acre parcel in the Van Buren Township Section 1 at South Liberty Drive. It does not have an address yet. The owner is Auto Vest, and uh, I do believe Daniel Butler is here today um, as petitioner's representative and also with representing Bynum Faneuil and Associates. Um, this property is, um, again, located here on South uh, Liberty Drive. You have Baxter just to the west and Menards to the south, just to orientate you. It is a part of the Whitehall PUD, um, and we had recently had an outline plan amendment to this property here, um, which is also owned by the petitioner as well, to allow um, automotive uses and auto sales. The original outline plan was approved in 1979, I believe by the city of Bloomington. Um, the uses are here in this paragraph here, and um, it does not include what they're hoping to do, which are these uses. Um, so mostly they're wanting to do a lot of the automo automotive um, and repair and sales of automotive uh, staff and plan commission has struck this specific minor subdivision, or I'm sorry, automobile repair services minor off the list uh, because it does have to have a residential component to it. Um, and then I'm also gonna point out that warehousing and distribution activities is also being requested as a part of this outline plan amendment. Uh, this is site conditions currently, it's a vegetated lot. Um, I'll point out that this area here is a regional detention basin uh, owned by the county commissioners. And this is the current configuration. So the petitioner currently owns two lots, um, this one, and then this is that 8.99 acres that they're wanting to add the, those different uses to. And the, the hope is that they do a, a lot line shift between these two properties to allow the auto uses to expand and then to have this um, warehousing kind of tucked back away from the road. Uh, I'll also point out this configuration that there are going to be a proposed three entrances and there will be a shared entrance um, to get to this property and then also be able to access through here. Uh, I believe the purpose of that is to assist with the unloading of large semi trucks for, for car purposes and prevent any traffic backup on South Liberty Drive. So again, the, the current uses um, are industrial and then the recently added auto uses that were added in 2019. And currently there's only industrial uses at the, the site here. Uh, and then again, to the right are the proposed uses that they would like to have. Is just a couple of site photos. It is uh, a site that has less than 12% slopes um, and is vegetated currently. Again, you can see this regional detention basin over here. Um, and I point this out because one of the conditions is that uh, there be a 50 foot access easement to get to this, um, to be able to do maintenance on it as needed. And again, I'm pointing out that um, there is a proposed 50 foot access easement. So once this, this property is developed, there would be a paved drive that would allow for an easier access uh, by the county to do maintenance. There is actually uh, a sewer easement, or I'm sorry, um, an access easement already to that regional detention basin. Uh, and it kind of is depicted here. It is off site, so it is not part of this petition site, but it also is not an improved 
uh, surface or anything. And so it would be easier that should this um, outline plan amendment pass and the conditions are accepted, that we would have this more um, accessible way to get to the detention basin. Uh, the highway department's engineer, Paul Satterley, um, the only comments he really had was that during the development plan review, they would need to coordinate for a traffic signal modification, that one that, that, that assists Baxter employees to get on and off of South Liberty Drive. And then the plan commission did recommend a, a positive recommendation on January 17th with a vote of seven to zero based on the findings, conditions, and highway department reports. With that, um, staff was also recommending approving this outline plan amendment. Um, and here I will read through the six recommended conditions and I'll go ahead for the record and read through each of those. So one is that the automotive repair service minor be stricken from the list due to the residential requirement for this use. Two, the petitioner record a written commitment to grant an easement to the county commissioner's ingress egress access to parcel number dash or 530901.0001.0001.0015. Number three, petitioner adhere to the sign structure standards outlined in chapter 807 and specifically the regulations applied to the commercial zones under table 7-1. Number four, a through easement between the petition site and 701 South Liberty will be referred to uh, in the individual lot deeds. And I demonstrated that with that um, semi-truck example. Petitioner, and then number five, petitioner to update outline plan to include chapter 802 use, defin or use conditions. As stated in the next slide, the petitioner is to include a statement that conditions 13, 50, and 53 are not applicable. And number six, petitioner to agree to condition 16 for the petition site. And in reference, um, I do have these special conditions that will be adopted as a part of the chapter 802 use definitions and special conditions that are linked together. And many of these just have to do with um, screening and outdoor storage. Um, some of them actually aren't even quite applicable, such as this site is um, 750 feet away from State Road 37, so we don't need to worry about Condition 21, but um, it's more of a reference sheet here. So with that, um, I'm willing to answer any questions or take some comments. Commissioner Jones? No, I don't, thank you. Commissioner Thomas? No questions. I appreciate the uh, petitioner's willingness to um, provide that access to our lot um, and to work with the highway department on the signal. So, um, so no questions otherwise. I, I also appreciate the fact that the, the drive that they're proposing uh, will take the semis off of Liberty Drive and not block things. Um, so with that said, is there anyone uh, present who wishes to speak in favor of this rezone? I believe there's a petitional representative on on this call, so I think he, by our rules, would be allowed to speak, and then you go to positive. Okay, and thank then, you. All right. Then. So, Mr. <coughs> Mr. Butler. Can you guys hear me? Yes, thank you. Um, I don't know if that would really add anything else. Um, there was an email that came through from Tammy this morning in regards to the existing easement to that lot to the east. Um, so we are going, to, we do intend for that to be vacated and then relocated with the new road up there to the north of our property. I just want to make that clear. Um, but other than that, um, I'm here for any questions. Thank you. Appreciate your attendance. Now, is there anyone who wishes to speak in favor of this free zone? Is there anyone who wishes to speak against it? Seeing none, I'll go back to my 
the board here. Uh, all those in favor of approving ordinance 2023-06, the Whitehall Business Park PUD amendment number four, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes three to zero. Thank you, Ms. Behrman. Thank you. Uh, at this point, we have no additional appointments. Uh, I will say that uh, free te COVID testing is still available at the Monroe County Health Department at 119 West 7th Street, as well as the Monroe County Public Health Clinic at 333 East Miller Drive. We are still accepting um, applications for some of our boards and commissioners. You can apply at co.monroe.in.us. There are two uh, upcoming blood drives out at Ivy Tech on Wednesday, March the 8th at 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. And on Friday, March the 10th from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. I want to thank anyone who donated last week at the blood drives. Um, remind you that you can sign up for the Monroe County alert notification system, sorry, uh, for all the weather and health related items. And again, that's at co.monroe.in.us. And um, the Monroe County Commissioners and County Council have extended the assistance fund for county residents who need assistance in paying utilities or rent. And please contact your township trustee for further information. Uh, and finally, I want to remind the public that the commissioners are holding virtual office hours. We have six different ones throughout the, the month. And they're at different days, different times. You can find them on the webs the county website on the calendar and you're welcome to call in and chat with us um, we are not we do not record these and what you say to us is held in confidence so please feel free to, to dial in whenever you wish uh, do any of my either of my colleagues have anything to add no um, then we do have a work session at what time shall we return it is now 10:53. 11.05 sound good to you? Okay, mm -hmm. then I will call, I will adjourn this meeting. We will be back next week um, on, oh my gosh, March the 1st. Yeah. That, that can't be happening, can it? Uh, we will return on, on March the 1st, 10 a.m. for our next meeting, and we'll be back at, at 11.05. Thank you.